Hey everyone, welcome to Cricut Time. If you like this video, subscribe for more project ideas and tutorials on all things Cricut. For today's tutorial, I will show you how to do your own wood burning. This process is actually really easy to do and I'll walk you through all the steps in this tutorial. You do need quite a few materials to do wood burning. First of all, you need some wood. I used a wooden spoon for this project, but you can also use a cutting board, signs, or whatever wood you want to decorate. The key is that whatever wood you choose works best if it does not have a coating or sealer on it. Next, you'll need some stencil vinyl or permanent vinyl. I have tested both, and honestly, they work exactly the same. To prep the wood, you'll need some fine sandpaper. This is probably the most important step, so make sure you have this handy. You'll need a heat gun to burn the wood. The one I used was only $30 from Amazon, and it worked perfectly. I'll include a link in the description below. Lastly, you'll need a wood burning solution. You can buy these ready to go, like a scorch marker or a wood burning gel, but I just made my own and it was super easy. If you want to go the route where you make your own, you just need a food thickener like Thicket or Thicken Up and some ammonium chloride. This I also picked up on Amazon and I'll include that link in the description below as well. Let's start out this project in Design Space. I found the design I used for this project right in Cricut's Design Space in the Images section. For this design, I just wrote in Tis the Season and then I scrolled down and found one that I liked. I'll include the image number in the description below so you can find it easily. I'll start out by cutting a piece of stencil vinyl a bit larger than my design. I'll stick this down to a green mat and use a brayer to make sure it's stuck down smoothly. Now I'll pop it into my Maker 3. You can use a Cricut or a Silhouette for this step. Next, I'll carefully use my weeder tool to pull off the design. Stencil vinyl is pretty easy to take off a mat. Just flip the mat over and peel the mat off the vinyl. I put a piece of transfer tape over my design and now I'll cut out a few slits. This design is going on a wooden spoon. Because it is curved, cutting little slits will allow me to put it on smoothly. If you are putting your stencil on a flat surface, skip this step. My design is ready, so now I can get my spoon ready. It is incredibly important to sand the wood before you stick on your design. Once you think you've sanded enough, sand a little extra just to be sure. The goal is to smooth out the wood grain so the gel can't run or make the design bleed. Now I can line the design up into position. I'll just pull off the backing paper and center the design onto the spoon. I'll use my scraper tool to stick the vinyl down and then pull off the transfer tape. Next, let's mix the wood burning solution. Unless you're doing a really large project, you don't need to mix very much of this at a time. Today I'll make about a quarter of a cup. The first thing you need is a food thickener. Today I'm using Nestle's Thicken Up because I happen to have it in my pantry. Thicket works exactly the same with the same ratios. I have heard that cornstarch works as well, but I've never actually tried that way myself to verify. For about a quarter of a cup of this solution, I'll use four teaspoons of food thickener. Next, you need half a tablespoon of ammonium chloride. 
this is the ingredient that is going to burn the wood. Finally, add the warm water. I like my wood burning solution to be thick and therefore less likely to run. So, I add just under a quarter of a cup of warm water. Let the solution sit for about 10 minutes to thicken up. My solution has had time to thicken, so now I'll do one more thing to make sure the stencil vinyl on my spoon is fully adhered. I'm going to go over the stencil just quickly with my blow dryer to heat the adhesive a bit. Now I can use a small paintbrush and paint the wood burning gel onto my design. An important thing to remember when you're doing this step is that it works best if there's a really thin coat of gel on the wood. If you make it too thick, you're going to see little clumps afterward. Everything is covered, now I'll let it dry. This has had time to dry completely, so now I can carefully remove the stencil. If you have any little sections that you need to use your weeder tool to remove, just be sure to go carefully and don't push too hard into the wood. Otherwise, you might dent the wood by accident in the process. This is finally ready for the heat gun. You can kind of see the design when you turn it, but the next step is where it really stands out. Make sure you do this last step outside. The heat gun will burn the Imodium Chloride into the wood, and not only will it smell, but it can also set off your smoke detectors if you do it inside your house. It is recommended to wear goggles, a mask, and heat resistant gloves for this step as well. When you're using your heat gun, you don't want to stay in any one spot for too long. Keep the heat gun moving the whole time. It can be very easy to burn either the ammonium chloride or the actual wood if you don't. If you think an area is getting too dark too fast, you can also back the heat gun up away from the wood so you have more control over how much heat it is getting. As you can see from outside, it was cold out when I did this. I had my heat gun closer to my spoon than I would have if it were warm outside. For kitchen utensils, cutting boards, or anything else that food will touch, make sure you wash off the ammonium chloride really good before you serve any food on it. If you're planning on using this solution on anything other than clean wood without a coating, make sure you research it first to ensure that it will be food safe. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more project ideas and tutorials on all things Cricut.